What is going on guys? Ben checking in and welcome to Mint where we bring nursing to you. Now before we talk about today's video, we would like to thank each and every one of you for supporting this channel. We are happy that we are able to help you guys in your journey in the medical field. For all of you who are new to the channel, welcome. We are happy to have you here and if you find our videos helpful, we would really appreciate it if you smash that like button and that subscribe button because it really does help this channel. Alright, so today we are going to talk about the different kinds of IV fluids, specifically the isotonic fluid, the hypotonic fluid, and the hypertonic fluid. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Hey guys, today we'll talk about the three types of IV fluids, the isotonic solution, the hypotonic solution, and the hypertonic solution. But before we begin, there are three minor things that I need you guys to be familiarized to make this lecture a lot easier to follow. First is the cell. Just know that when I say intracellular, it means everything inside the cell. And when I say extracellular, it pertains to everything outside the cell. The second thing that you have to be familiarized is homeostasis. Now, in a nutshell, it's balance within our cells. Fluids shift in and out of the cells via osmosis. And that's the third concept that you need to know. Osmosis is when water moves from a lower concentration to a higher concentration area. So moving forward, we're going to talk about the isotonic solution. In an isotonic solution bag, there are equal amounts of water and solute inside the bag. Example of these isotonic solution are your NS, D5.225 NS, and your lactated ringer. Now the dextrose or your D5W also belongs to the isotonic solutions, but we'll discuss this later when we talk about the hypotonic solution. So just keep this in mind for now. So to better understand the different IV fluids, we need to understand what effects it has for ourselves. So here we have a cell with a homeostasis. This is just a pretend homeostasis. For lecture purposes, we'll pretend that the cell has four waters and four solutes to maintain that homeostasis. Let's see what happens when we administer an isotonic solution inside our body. The concentration of the isotonic solution is similar to the concentration of the intracellular part of the cell. So when this isotonic solution gets in our body, there is no effects on the cell because the concentration outside the cell is equal to the concentration inside the cell. So it has no effects on the cell whatsoever. It only adds fluid volume outside the cell. So that's our isotonic solution. When we talk about hypotonic solution in the bag, there is more water than solute. Hypotonic solution, from the word hypo, it means low, tonic means your solute. So there is low solute inside the bag. Example of the hypotonic solution is your half NS. Now, there are other hypotonic solution, but the most common hypotonic solution that you'll find in the hospital is your half NS. So let's go back to our pretend homeostasis. When we administer a hypotonic solution, we are giving a solution that is less concentrated than our intracellular concentration. And by the process of osmosis, the water is going to shift from extracellular space into the intracellular space. It basically hydrates the cell. It made our cell larger. So when you think about hypotonic solution, hypo, it blows the cell because if you give too much hypotonic solution, it is going to make the cell blow up. So that's why when we give a hypotonic solution, we give it slow. So remember, a hypotonic solution is a solution that is low concentration, hypo, low, and it hydrates the cell. It basically blows the cell. It makes it bigger. So hypo, low, and it blows the cell. Now, in here, we can talk about our fluid D5W or the dextrose. It is basically an isotonic solution with a hypotonic function. So the way D5W is made in the bag is that it has equal amounts of water and equal amounts of solute. Now, in this case, it is a dextrose. Our solute here is the glucose. So in the bag, it's technically an isotonic solution. So let's go back to our pretend homeostasis. So when we inject dextrose in our system, the glucose is used by our body very fast. So what we end up getting is a hypotonic solution, which is a 
lot of water and not much of solute, making the concentration outside the cell less than what's inside. And by the process of osmosis, it shifts fluid from the extracellular space into the intracellular space. So it has the same function of a hypotonic solution where it blows up the cell, it hydrates the cell. The only difference is that outside it's an isotonic, but inside it functions as a hypotonic solution. And lastly, we have the hypertonic solution. And by the word hyper, it means more. Tonic is solute. So a hypertonic solution bag has more solute than water. Examples of your hypertonic solution is your D5 half NS, your D5 NS, your D10 W, and MS3%. So when we get a hypertonic solution inside our body, we are introducing a solution that has a much higher concentration that's what's inside our cell. By the process of osmosis, it's going to pull water out of the cell. Thus, it shrinks the cell. So remember, hypertonic solution, it pulls water out of the cell. So now let's review. Isotonic solution, there is equal amount of water and solute. Since the concentration inside a bag is equal to the concentration of the cell, it has no effects on the cell. Sample of your isotonic solution is your NS, your D5.225, NS and your lactated ringer. And remember, your D5W or your dextrose is also part of the isotonic solution. And next is your hypotonic solution. There is more water than solute. Hypo, low low concentration inside the bag. And what it does is that it hydrates the cell. And remember what we said, hypo, low concentration, it blows the cell. It makes the cell bigger. Example of your hypotonic solution is your half NS. So lastly is your hypertonic solution. Hyper means there is more solute than water. So by the word hyper, it means high concentration inside the bag. And because of osmosis, it shrinks the cell. So it pulls water out of the cell. That's it. Well, that is it for today, guys. I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. By doing this, our videos will go straight to you. But make sure you hit that notification bell so you guys get notified when we upload new videos. Once again, my name is Ben and Mint, signing out.